better sleep, better focus, better attention throughout the day, and better functioning throughout your life. If you are interested in learning how to increase these principles, stay tuned because we're gonna go all through it through mindfulness. Hey, what's going on everybody? John Corey, LCDC3 and student nurse here. Today we are going to go all over the principle of mindfulness. This is an absolutely incredible philosophy that has really been used for hundreds of years, maybe even thousands, and it's really around the philosophy of being here in the present moment. So, in today's society, in today's world, we have so many distractors, so many things trying to pull us away from our present thought. And in that present thought is true, true enlightenment. With that present thought, our brain is acting like a muscle. And as we're able to retain our focus, retain the present moment and the things going around us, we actually strengthen our brain's ability to, to not only increase immune system functioning, increase sleep, decrease cortisol levels, but really provide a, a greater outlook and understanding of life and the things around us. So these benefits are really endless, you guys. They've done lots of studies that show that people who practice this just a few minutes every day, their brain becomes stronger and stronger and stronger in the ability to ground ourselves in the present moment, stay focused and stay on our tasks at hand. This is something in clients that I have. They are the highest level clients will use this and it's endlessly applicable to whether it's studying, whether it's work, whether it's projects, you need to be using this and it's something very short every day that we can use and it will greatly benefit you. So I wanted to start by saying, we spend, study after study has shown that we spend 50% of our time throughout the day in a daydreaming state. So we are not even present. We're in our, I call the subconscious and the, the natural thinking and the natural ability of the brain to wonder. It's like the matrix. We go into this world where almost anything's possible. We go to the past, we go to the present, we go to the future, and we're constantly manipulating things. And our unconscious, things that we are unaware of, they naturally pull us in a certain way. And when that happens, it happens so fast and so quick. We can get anxiety. We get distracted. We don't really even know what's going on. And they've linked this to a lot of problems, especially in youth. And as we get older, if we exercise our brains correctly, we are able to not only hold our attention, but do these things that increase our immune system, increase our sleep, increase things that are so vital to humans being successful and thriving. So I wanted to share this quote. It says, this is from a Roman philosopher. It says that, learn to control your mind or it will control you. And I could not speak more truly that 50% of our time, not even consciously where we are, but it's just kind of drifting in and out to the future, to the past. And if you learn to control that, you get to be the driver in the driver's seat. And it's something so important for not only people in recovery, but people in the real world to really master and control because like any muscle, the brain is the ultimate muscle. So, Three keys we're gonna go over in this video. The first key is grounding yourself. And when I say ground yourself, I mean we're gonna focus on one of the five senses and really dial into what that feels like. The second is opening up, and that's really being honest with yourself and others who you are close to. And the third is reflection, and that is re-experiencing a moment and playing through it in a way that you are happy with and can learn from for future exposure. So this first principle of grounding, this is really dialing into our natural ability to be in the present moment. Now, this is best done when we can focus on one of the five senses. So pick a sense that we are most comfortable with, you know, naturally for myself and many people who practice this skill, it is breathing, just naturally breathing, focusing on that breath, concentrating on how it feels to feel the lungs fill up with air and then breathe out, letting that air leave you. And when you do this, when you truly dial into this, you can feel that sense of peace. This helps with anxiety, any kind of problem that you might have, this will greatly, greatly enhance your ability to cope and deal with that stress and problem. So this Tibetan monk, he had a famous saying, it says, what we practice 
grows stronger. And I could not reinforce that more than anything. As we know, patterns, behaviors, there's a neural map in our brain as we conform to that pattern, as we do that more and more, it gets stronger. And there's brain studies showing that this actually happens. It's called cortical thickening. When we do a behavior, a pattern that establishes, it gets stronger in our brain. Our brain uses that pattern to say, this is normal, this is what we like, and this is what we want. And when we do that, when we try and stray from that, your brain almost feels off. If you know what I'm talking about, if you try and break a pattern, you feel off, you feel odd, you don't feel like yourself because you're going against what your brain has encoded so importantly. Now, focus on these five senses. Now, a great way that we can also do this is sense of smell. You know, if you're in a new place or an environment, really just try and close your eyes, focus on that sense of smell. If you're in the open or near a an, nature, place. Make sure that you're really focusing on that because it really does. It strengthens that muscle of the brain and it allows you to better be in the present, in the moment where true growth is possible. So breathing and, and what this brings ultimately, what this Tibetan monk, as you can see in this study, just real quick, this study, what it shows is he had an EEG on which tracks brain electrical activity. And what this does is it was allowed, they would present him with a topic. They would present him with a mental picture for him to focus on. When he would do this, his whole brain would light up with activity. Now, usually in your average person, when you focus on one thing, your whole brain doesn't light up, only certain parts of the brain. So if you're thinking about a visual, the visual part of the brain will light up. If you're thinking about a smell, the part of the brain that's associated with smell will light up. But this man was so in touch with the present, so in touch with this principle of mindfulness that the whole brain would light up. And what that means is that his whole brain is so interconnected that every sense, every smell, every thought, every action, his whole brain was in touch with it. And through that, he was able to have clarity. He was able to have focus. He was able to be in the present where we know we can grow and we can prosper. So. Number two is opening up. And the real truth of opening up is being honest with ourselves. So what I always advocate for is journaling. Journaling is, you'll hear it from only the best psychologists. They say the best therapist you could ever have is a journal. Because in this, we can reflect, we can go into to moments where we, we have emotional outbursts, where we have things that bother us and we can collect them and be honest with ourselves about the situation. And when we do this, we're better able to look at the situation and not only go through what we would have changed, but what we are going to do when it comes up again, because it's so important to not only address situations in a way that we understand and we can relate to, but that we can apply them to the future, because that's what it's really all about is growing, taking that next step forward so that instead of something hurting us, it, it, it gives us a lesson so that we can excel when we see it again. So through this and the other big principle I want to connect with is connecting with other people, connecting with others, especially your family, your friends, those people you, you hold dearest in your life, being honest with them, you know, opening up your values, the things you care about. When we do this, our brain is naturally, you know, we go to the, the, the whole brain lights up. We're able to, to honestly express ourselves and we know that has a great profound effect on the health of the brain. So doing these two things, journaling and connecting with others, very important to open up. And like I said, what this allows us to do ultimately is discovery of the truth. When I say discovery of the truth, I mean the things that we hold closest to our hearts, our, our spirits, our values, our beliefs, our concerns. And when we do this repetitively and over time, it naturally allows our brain to develop, become stronger. And that's what mindfulness is all about. Third principle is all around reflection. Now, reflection is, like I said earlier, it is re-experiencing the moment with greater insight. It's looking at that moment that we went through and deciding what happened, what would I have changed if I could go back, and what I'm going to do when that comes up again. When we do this, it not only allows our brain, our unconscious, to take that scenario that it might twist a million thousand hundred times through the day and look at it with greater insight look at it in a way that our brain not only self doesn't self-destruct, but it looks at the situation and says, hey, what lessons can I pull out from that? What ways can I grow and move forward? And when I do that, the future, which is always going to present new problems, we can grow from these and we can apply this to these problems and conquer these problems in a way that we might not have conquered in the past. So, by doing this, by moving forward, by reflecting, and the journal is the best way to, to reflect, we are able to grow, we are able to act mindfully. And when we do this, like I said, it is the greatest advantage we have as humans to be able to go back, reflect on something, and learn from it. 
So guys, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it as our channel grows. We want to know what you guys think and want to know we are all about not only the process of recovery, but this applies to everyone because the aspect of mental health, of dominating mental health and, and using it to your advantage. Too often we let mental health backslide on us and work against us, but by reprogramming it with mindfulness, with meditation, with the things that we can naturally do, we set ourselves up for a greater future that is brighter and full of opportunity. So thank you, and until next time.